And welcome to Nancy's Neighborhood, folks. And today it's not raining. I mean, <laughs> really, we are so thrilled here at Nancy's Neighborhood. It's not raining. Actually, it's almost a spring day. It's warm, just a little bite in the air, and a lot of wind. So I didn't look at my hair before I came <laughs> on. But a lot of wind out there. But I understand we're going to get some rain tomorrow. So enjoy today. Go out and do whatever you need to do. And enjoy the day today. So uh, in Nancy's Neighborhood, we have a lot of things going on. And my next door neighbors happen to be New Hope Pregnancy Center. And I'm just thrilled that they're my neighbors because they're great neighbors. Uh, you know, na good neighbors are people that you have if you need mm. and you don't have if you don't need. <laughs> and, and they're wonderful. They are the best neighbors ever. And so I have Delaney Walker and Tracy Shellhouse on with me today. They have an event coming up that is kind of sort of sold out but we still want to talk about it yes, yes absolutely yes okay and, and we may still have openings so we okay. want to talk super about it we want to talk about it that missed that rsvp or just we the event wasn't on their radar okay so it, share with everybody what we're doing so we have our annual spring banquet next week it's going to be on thursday march 21st and while we have hit our goal for tables we still have room for additional tables we just have to get a little more creative with the placement mm -hmm. um, and individual tickets so those individual tickets for 45 dollars will be people, people that we um, will sit either um, in the in the normal tables or they can purchase a ticket for the stadium seating um, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. The <laughs> tables seat eight, and they're 350, and then the tickets individuals is 45 dollars. Okay, so I and it is going to be. We've already talked about this prior to coming on the air, but it's going to be at First Baptist. So yes. Bick will be cooking. When do you have to let Bick know how many actual people you're feeding? Uh, we are talking today. <laughs> okay. Okay. But we have, we've been doing this for a number of years, so we talk about it and explain that you know that between now and early next week, there's always. There's always people that you hear from last minute or, mm -hmm. and so we've already discussed the uh, whole need for flexibility. I understand. <laughs> it's not uncommon for us to find out the day of or a couple of days out from the event that someone who bought a table said, oh, by the way, I'm just going to gift it to the ministry because they haven't filled it with anyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the last thing you want at a fundraising banquet are empty tables. Can't have right. empty tables, and right. And so even though right now um, we have met um, the table sales that we were shooting for, we had already gotten, um, sat down with Vic, we had sat down and talked with Mark at uh, First Baptist about being able to expand because one of the things that we are finding now is our events are selling out. And that's awesome. It that's is awesome. Wonderful. Uh, last year was the first year that uh, staff members, that we'd always been seated, that staff members did not sit at the banquet. We asked them, please get in the stadium seating so that we can put potential donors right. in those seats. And so we are seeing that becoming a trend. And First Baptist is so wonderful. Oh, they're fantastic. The food about is these. excellent. Mm -hmm. They they run the media. You have no worries. You just tell them this is what I want to do, and, and they go make it happen. Yeah. Um, the setup, um, and one of the things that's great about them too is uh, I remember one year after they had set up for uh, forty tables, and I got in there just to begin the sound check and everything else, and uh, Mark came and brought me a card. Um, where they had oh, yeah. written out a prayer for us and all of the, the everyone that had set that room up had signed it and prayed How for nice. the event as they were setting it up, praying for the success and God's glory. Yeah. And so, I mean, we don't want to leave that venue. Right. Uh, it is so amazing. And as we said, the food is so good. Oh, it is. It is. Uh, our event is really fun uh, for those that like a variety because we always do beef and chicken. We don't do the typical banquet chicken. Yeah, I'm sure you've been to plenty of those events. Yes, sometimes it's <laughs> camouflaged. You're not sure whether it's beef or chicken, but you know that you're eating a meat. Yes. And you know what I have found? I've, I've been in Cleveland, Brady County for uh, close to 40 years, and I have found that the RSVP on the bottom of invitations mm -hmm. means if I don't get a better offer. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so I, I'm telling you, folks, mm -hmm. I'm fussing at you. I really, really <laughs> am because you're notorious for doing this because they wait till the last minute. Yes. And, and when you're planning a food venue, yes. you can't wait till the last minute. Oh, you can't, um, because in the end, we're going to pay for the expense, yes. even if someone doesn't show up, because we are paying per plate. We're paying right. for what they had to purchase and buy and cook. Right. Uh, one of the things that's great about First Baptist is they make sure that the food doesn't go to waste. It goes to good use, yeah. but nevertheless, we are going to cover that expense. Right. Um, and 
It is such an amazing event. Um, we, I have one board member that's been to every banquet uh, that New Hope has ever had. And every year he tells me, I think that was the best one. I think <laughs> and that was don't the best you love one. That. I do. Yeah. And, and the fact that it is growing and it is, our events are not, um, they're not sad events. I think a lot of times when people think of New Hope, mm -hmm. they think about um, that, you know, that we're about abortion. We're not. We're about life. Right. And life is great and life is good. And so we have amazing stories to tell. We have um, wonderful client stories, um, just some of the things that God is doing at New Hope. And it is fun. And that's part of the reason we often have comedians. Oh, yeah. Like we do this year. Okay, who do you have? We have Mike Williams. And what makes Mike really unique is he, uh, he has been on HBO and all these big networks and everything else. Uh, he's a former pastor and um, one of those really funny people with ADHD that you can tell that when he was a <laughs> child, um, you're glad that he probably wasn't yours. But it would be really funny <laughs> if he was your friend's kid. You, you know? I understand. So you could send him home. Yes. At 7 yes. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Or maybe even earlier, I depending on whether he had taken his medication that day. Right. Um, but Mike is absolutely great. But what I love about what Mike does is part of what he's doing when he's doing the, the speaker circuit, when he's speaking at banquets, is he's raising money to take back to the Dominican Republic, where he lives half the year, and where he's opened pregnancy help centers. Oh, neat. So this is someone that's not just making money. He believes in the mission and in the cause. And I think that's part of the reason that we have been so blessed at those events financially. Mm -hmm. uh, 2014 mm -hmm. was our biggest, um, at that point in time, our largest fundraiser ever as far as income and revenue. And, uh, and it was Mike. And it was a sold out banquet that year. It was, we, yeah. Yeah, we had him in 2013, and here we sit, um, and 14 came around. Everybody was so excited about him coming back. We sold out, and apparently he left an impression. You know, because Evidently, because it's been several years. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Mike is very much in demand. Every year he puts a cap on how many places he'll speak at. He's he, The cap is 100, and there are 21 wow. different places that have had him five times or more. Oh, wow. And they, mm -hmm. you know, they've obviously done well, but he's very entertaining, he's engaging, and he really does a fantastic job of simultaneously pulling on heartstrings and making people laugh to their bellies. And yes. making people happy that he's pulled yeah. on yes. those heartstrings. And yeah. that's what's so wonderful. And, and like we were saying, I mean, to go about the food, you all have to pay for anything yes. that is not mm -hmm. ticketed. So uh, this is vitally important because you all are a nonprofit. We, we are, are a nonprofit. <laughs> um, you know, I, I've had people recently. Um, the not-for-profit designation has um, gotten um, more prevalent. In other words, uh, there are nonprofits that are, you know, ending the year in black, which mm -hmm. is where you want to end it. Which would be awesome. Yes, yes, but there are some that are ending the year in black signif significantly enough that they're now, um, we're seeing them refer to themselves as not-for-profit. In other words, we may be fundraising and doing a great job. We may be putting money in the bank, but that's not why we're doing it. Um, right now, New Hope's still a nonprofit. Right. Uh, <laughs> we will end this year in the black, um, but we incurred a huge expense in 2015, 16, 17, 18 as we prepared to open uh, the medical clinic, and then we did. And so this so far has been our best year, but what people need to know is we had to increase our budget by about 75 percent in order to maintain that medical clinic. Wow. And, you know, we've been very blessed. That's a big increase. It is a huge it's telling me, increase. Nancy. Yeah, it is a huge increase. And the, that clinic alone cost about 90000 a year to operate. But it's not just that, because the more people you have coming through the clinic, and they find out about our other services and our other programs, mm -hmm. and they enroll in there. And so we've had to double our paid staff. We had to triple our facility size to be able to meet the need. We have doubled our programs. And yeah. so, um, you know, honestly, uh, for that 75%, if you hear the double, 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 triple, <laughs> we've been very frugal. We've done it very well. Yeah. And, and that's amazing because, because the people, when they come through your door, it's not just like straight line, Everybody is not the same. No. Oh, no one's and the same. And so that's right. <laughs> and so you have to be able to uh, to diverge and to go whatever way you need to go with each of your clients. Yes, and you know that's something I think that makes our ministry and organization unique too, is there's no particular type of staff member, paid or volunteer. None of us are the same. We come from different skill sets, mm -hmm. and um, but God can use 
all of those skill sets. And so, you know, sometimes I'll be speaking at church and people will come up and go, oh, I love what you do, um, but I just couldn't do that. And I'm like, you couldn't do what? Well, I couldn't do that, the pregnancy coaching. And I'm like, okay, well, that's just one of many opportunities right. we have. Right. <laughs> Can I talk with you about that? Let's set mm -hmm. up a tour. Um, because we have grown so much, we now have people that are administrative volunteers, clerical volunteers, people that help with uh, the facility, landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, mean, I saw someone out this morning. I'm thinking, yes, well, I need shame. to see. But no, I, I have landscapers. Don't get me. Boys, y'all are fine. You're still good, okay? I have an 11 and a 9-year-old that take care oh. of my yard. Yes, mm. so you boys are okay. So, uh, But yes, the, and, and people don't seem to understand that it's not just one person doing one thing right. for each of the people. That, I mean, it, it's you have to diverse. You have to be diverse. Yeah, absolutely, right. and and it meets the needs of varied um, clients mm -hmm. because, as you said, nobody's the same. Yeah, and that probably sounds like a cookie cutter response, but I mean, if they were all the same, it'd make it make uh, things easier. Things it. easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody. They all have and their different stories. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could just you know, shoot it right down the you line. Know exactly you, you, exactly you know exactly what you have to have. What materials? Yeah. You don't have to have that yeah. plethora of materials because we have so many um, different educational things that we can address right. with our clients. Not every client is going to mm -hmm. need all of those, but that means that we have just a plethora of um, videos, uh, coaching um, you know, subjects and pamphlets and books, you know, because you never know what someone's going to need. Right, and just because they come in and have the baby, your, your care for them, your coverage of them doesn't just stop right there. It does not. And so that's a whole nother yeah, it ball is. game. Yeah, go ahead. You're fine. <laughs> well, they can, once the baby's born, they can main, uh, stay in the Earn While You Learn program up until that child's first birthday. And many of them have saved up enough baby bucks at that point because we, in our hope chest, we keep things up to a 2T uh, level. They're able to cash those baby bucks in and still have clothing for the, the year to come and to be able to get diapers and those kinds of things. But, you know, we are a, um, a pro-life organization. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, when they think of pro-life, they think that you are against abortion. Mm. And um, I think that there are a lot of people that are anti-abortion that aren't necessarily pro-life. And I am glad that they don't like abortion and they don't think that it should be legal. But I do believe that being pro-life takes it to another step. Being pro-life is, uh, for us, means also sharing the gospel and the hope and that your life's not over, you're not at an end, this can be a beginning, mm -hmm. and that's very powerful. But then we take it further because we know, um, I, I believe it's John 10, 10, where he said, you know, I've come that I can give life and life more abundant. And another translation reads, a rich and satisfying life. That's what we want for our clients. And some of our clients are stuck um, in difficult, dire situations. Mm -hmm. Many of them have a poverty mentality and, and they don't know how to get out of that. They want mm -hmm. to, uh, but no one's ever sat down and talked with them about how to set goals, how to make plans for the right. future. And that's part of the reason we have introduced a new program called Growth Goals. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to provide all the great Earn While You Learn education, the parenting, the prenatal, the classes, all of those kinds of things. But those that want uh, to commit to taking it a step further, we want to step up alongside them and teach them how to really begin to win at life and to start catching that momentum, because momentum can carry you a long oh, way. Oh, absolutely. You know, but when you also hit that brick wall, it's easy to stop and just stay there, and a lot of people do. And so in that, what our focus is, is not just being pro-life, we want to be pro-abundant life. Mm -hmm. We want them to have the best life, to live the life that they're intended to live. Yeah. And, and the, the poverty frame of mind is generational too. Yes, it is. And it's very, very tough mm -hmm. to pull those individuals out of that situation and into a positive situation. That's right, because they've never, often they've never seen any right. other example. Right. Um, poverty is cyclical and so is unplanned pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there is unplanned pregnancy that um, isn't necessarily unwanted. Uh, my husband and I have four children, and two weren't planned. They were surprises, okay? <laughs> but there, there is that unplanned, unwanted, or crisis pregnancy. Right. And that tends to be cyclical, too. And that was part of our intent with the Growth Goals Program, is to be able to break those cycles in our community and make Cleveland and Bradley County, especially from a familial perspective, a stronger community. Yeah. 
Okay, and you mentioned tours. So do you all do that? Yeah, we um, we always enjoy scheduling the tours because right. it gives us an opportunity to prepare spe uh, specifically for the um, what their area of interest is. However, if somebody wants to come in um, and take he wants to take a chance on one of us being available. We're also happy if somebody comes in and they're like, hey, can I get a tour of the facility? I hear you guys do that. But otherwise, um, I always recommend just going to newhopepcc.org, our website, because it has all of our information there, contact information, and they can call in or shoot an email to myself um, and uh, schedule a tour, and we're always happy to yeah, give them and, a Yeah, and I'm look. thinking because, because <clears throat> you are a privacy-type situation, mm -hmm. People can't just come in and say, hey, I need a tour. We need to be sure we schedule and be sure that you can work around the clients that you have in there right then that may not want people to know they're there. Well, they um, people can come in at um, any time just because, because we're open to walk-ins. We can't necessarily dictate when a client's going to be there. However, if somebody does schedule a tour, we can do one early in the day and they can see the whole facility mm -hmm. so that, like you are saying, they don't, because we, we, like if, we have a client and a counseling room. We're in the medical exam room. We're obviously not going to tour that right, area. Right. But if they do schedule with us, then we can make sure it's at a time where we can go in there. Okay, let's go back to the banquet is Thursday. It is a um, March 21st. March 21st. Yes, on a Thursday evening. And they can call if anybody else is interested out there in, in coming. You need to let these gals know <laughs> by yes. Monday, please. Um, Monday the 18th, so that they can actually get some more chicken and beef on the stove. <laughs> but how do they get in touch with you? Well, one of the easiest ways is to go to our website, and um, it's newhopepcc.org. But if you just Google New Hope Pregnancy Care Center, it's going to be the first thing that's going to pop up. And then from that website, you will see um, the landing page uh, on the home page has right at the top a hyperlink, a button hyperlink that says banquet. Oh, okay, that's pretty simple. It, yeah, it, it is. is. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the great things, you know, we've been talking about Nancy, we've talked about the growth goals we have going on, we've talked about the increase in clients. Um, we went medical in 2016, which, which I think these is awesome. Things. Yes. And yes. really the, the spring banquet attendees have played a huge role in this mm -hmm. because when we had that fantastic 2014 record-breaking year, that was when we were raising money to go medical. So the even the spring banquet attendees are very much a part of the success and um, that New Hope has had and the reach we have in the community. So it may seem like you're just attending a banquet and you know enjoying the comedian and hearing about an update and everything, but the, 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 um, the money pledged, the support given, is really what has helped us reach this point, obviously, and will help us continue to reach new milestones as we go forward. And y'all have done so much. You've grown so much since. Yes, we have. Because you've not always been my neighbor. No. no. You moved there into a bigger facility than what you had, and my producer is just making all kinds of faces at us. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Alex. We're getting ready to go off right now. Ladies, thank you all so much. <laughs> thank you. I want to remind people that you all are a nonprofit. You yes. are a dot org. So mm -hmm. if they start trying to look you up on any kind of website, you're .org you, because you are a nonprofit, yes. and <laughs> and they they need money for for this wonderful ministry to continue. So and you know someone if they want they can actually go to that same website and if they want to give toward the event even if they can't be there maybe they've been over the years and this year it's just not possible. We do have people that make those gifts and so uh, if you want to make sure we reach our goal this year, which is uh, I think. 85,000. Yeah, I think that's right. Wow. If they want to help us get to that goal, uh, we would so appreciate it. And you know, folks, if y'all are like me, sometimes you just rather write a check than have to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So this is a wonderful opportunity for you to do that. <laughs> yep. Ladies, thank you all thank so you much. I never see you all enough. I mean, sometimes <laughs> we wave, but that's about it. But, but actually, they really are my neighbors in Nancy's neighborhood. So folks, don't go away. We're going to take a commercial break. Watch our commercials, support our sponsors because they pay our bills, and I'll be right back with some upcoming events other than this wonderful banquet that's going to happen on the 21st. So don't go away. I'll be right back.